What's the word, y'all? To go out like this two years in a row is kind of sad. I can't even lie to you. Here I am, feeling good at the Boston versus Philly just because it was a good game, not because of the outcome, but because it ended up being a good game. Like, all right, let's see what KD and Devin Booker got in the tank because as of right now, that's what the team is. And they, they both gave us stinkers. I don't know the, what they ended up with. I could have started filming this video at halftime. I gave them a little bit more of a benefit of the doubt. I ain't looking at the box score. They they did not have good games. That's what the series had been, though. Devin Booker shoots 75% from the field, and KD also gave you 28. You win in those games. But if he struggles, if Kevin struggles or Devin struggles, what are we going to do? And what they're going to do is get blown out on their home court again in the playoff series. We'll come back to the Suns. I want to give all of my praise to the Denver Nuggets because as of right now, they've looked like the most complete team in the playoffs from, from the offensive side to the defensive side. They had it figured out. Coach Michael Malone gets his guys to the conference finals again. And we might even get a 2020 NBA conference finals rematch with the Lakers being one game away. They still got to beat the Warriors, but we might get a rematch here. And I think now they're better equipped to potentially make the long run. Every time I was appearing on someone else's show and they were asking me about the Western Conference, I... I picked the Suns because I trusted Kevin and Devin. And I was like, oh, that depth thing, yeah, it's a, it, it's a concern. But with Kevin and Devin are rocking, it's not going to be a lot of teams that can stop them. And that held to be true. But if they're not rocking, then it's like crazy. Um, the, the, the losing Chris Paul sucked. DeAndre Aiden not playing this game sucked. But th those, those two players, as much as we love Chris Paul on this, on this channel, that, that wasn't going to do. You know what I'm saying? It felt like even though we had the two games where the Suns ended up winning, this was a series for the Denver Nuggets to win. And I made a tweet about this a few days ago. This was when when Jokic had his 50-piece in that loss. Uh, I mentioned on this channel after the, the Bucks got eliminated, I still think Giannis is the best in the world. But there's a lot of conversation about who's the best in the world when the best of the world fails. Understandable. Did he fail? Uh, did he fail? You ask Giannis, that's a no. Um, and I, I don't know how you could be watching these games and watching what Nikola Jokic has been doing and not saying that if if he ain't number one, he ain't no further than three. Because the defense thing is what everybody pointed to as his biggest downside. And as of right now, he's an okay defender. This series right here was supposed to be the moment where he was going to get exposed, right? High pick and roll with Chris Paul. He's one of the best pick and roll players of all time. Yeah, he's 76 years old and not as good as he was at least two years ago. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. Now, again, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker did get their stuff off parts of this season or this series, but there was no exposing of Nikola Jokic on the defensive side. There wasn't a single moment where I, I watched this series where I thought to myself, Jokic feels outmatched when he's playing defense. That, that didn't exist. So now you add in that with his offensive toolbox? How can we not say he's not top three? And if Giannis ain't won, if we say Giannis ain't won because he was a one seed and got eliminated, fair. I'm throwing Jokic in as the one. But no matter what, no matter who they go against in that next round, they're going to have to figure some more things out uh, because both of those teams have their different things. I, If I had to guess which team the Nuggets match up best with, it might be the Lakers, yo. And I know that's crazy because the Lakers have been taking care of business and have not lost a home game yet as I'm recording this video. But again, I'm thinking about last year in the playoffs with Steph Curry and them boys did the exposing of Jokic and maybe that still can be the case because Steph Curry is such a nasty player. I, I don't know. We speaking too ahead of, let's focus on this game in this series. Every time a team gets eliminated from the playoffs or, you know, fails, I'm, again, I'm putting that in quotation marks here, the interpretation of failure is... is all over the place at this point in time in sports. You know what I'm saying? Actually, this team failed. Simple as that. Can they bounce back? Absolutely, yes. But but I'm going to say this team failed. You traded for one of the greatest of all time in the middle of the season, and you got eliminated in the second round. I call that a failure. Every time we see a team be disappointing or fail, we always try to figure, okay, what is next? And what's next for the Phoenix Suns feels very obvious um, right now as I'm recording this video, but it might end up being way more complicated once we get to that that pathway this offseason. Chris Paul is 37. I don't, I'm just going to keep saying different numbers. 38 years old at this point. And we have not seen a year in the last, what feels like seven, where his body didn't give out on him in the middle of a playoff run. I don't know how you can bring him back and say, okay, he's part, he's part of our initial core when it's failed you, the Phoenix Suns, year after year in these last couple. Two was DeAndre Aiden. 
There's, there's no way around it. Coming into the season, we know there were some things between him and Monty Williams. He got the offer sheet from the Indiana Pacers. He was ready to pack his bags. They, they, they match it or whatever. But it, it, it felt like after last year, after last year, his time with the Suns was over. He thugged it out. They thugged it out. They got through the season. But, but it wasn't without his turmoil. Where even in this series alone, the team was winning. Jacques Landale came off the bench and gave a, a ton of energy. And instead of celebrating because the Suns were winning the game, he was neglecting to give high fives to his teammates. He was around Pouton. Pouton, he don't do post-game interviews like those are the type of things that me personally, I don't like. Because, yeah, of course you want to play the game of basketball because that's what you get paid to do. And of course, because you're passionate about things, you should be able to put those things to the side and the, with the idea of the team's success and think, all right, next game, I got it there. They had Jock Landale today, and shout out to Jock Landale. He helped us win, but now it's my time to do the thing. And he said that in his post, right? He said, I, I, you know what I'm saying? I got to do what I got to do. Never came. Never happened. He started off the last game with like three offensive boards, and then he dunked the ball. We like, yeah, that's what we've been waiting for instead of that little old figure roll from a seven-foot-one guy. It, it, it never stood to that point. And then today we found out he's not playing. Okay, no big deal. I mean, well, yes, big deal, but no big deal because – his on-off numbers between him and Jacques Landell. Jacques Landell was the better big in this series. So, okay, whatever. They down by 30 points going into halftime. They show him as he walking into the tunnel, he's got a grin on his face. I don't care what anybody said. Your team is in a win or go home game. They're down by 30 and you're smiling. You're, you're ear to ear with it. Like that rubs me the wrong way. And I'm not even a fan of the team. I'm not one of his teammates. I'm not on the coaching staff. I'm a neutral fan watching this pissed that he's smiling because they down by 30. Where's the competitive juices? Where, they, where are they? So you think that Chris Paul's got to be out of the door? I don't know what that look like. What team are interested in the Chris Paul if he showcases year after year that he can't stay healthy in the playoffs? What team is can convince themselves that DeAndre Aiden is worth trading for considering he's got paid max money and he... He was, I wouldn't say unplayable, that's a stretch, but Jacques Landale, an undrafted dude in his draft class, played better than him. So what do they do? What teams take on some of these contracts? And it's not just about taking on the contracts anymore. It's about building a team. You know, because, yeah, if we, if we just want to do a contract dump, a lot of teams be interested in that. But, like, how do we, after what we saw this season, how can we build a team with these two pieces and get better for next year? And that's tough. That's going to be tough. And I don't envy the people in charge. I, I think Monty Williams got out coaching the series, but he also was running with Kevin and Devin in a Landry Shamit game here. So I don't I don't know. I, I know some people are calling for Monty Williams. I can't I, don't, I, I can't say that just yet. You know what I'm saying? Either way, uh, Coach Michael Malone is back in the conference finals. Nikola Jokic back in the conference finals, and this is a cool story considering Michael Porter Jr. and, and Jamal Murray being back for basically the first time and immediately they get a little shot to the conference finals. It's a duh. Let's talk about the other game. Uh, let's talk about the first game. That was the, that was the fun game of the night. You know what I'm saying? And it didn't start off that way. It did not start off that way. I thought this was about to be a blowout and I was ready to talk about it. And then the comeback came. And again, I'm watching this as a neutral fan. And this, this is what I felt when it was over. If I am a Philly fan, I'm so sad right now. You live to see another day. There is going to be a game seven. It's going to be a Boston if you've proven that you can win there, Boston. You've done it a few times now. But this was a, the recipe for a game you win 85% of the time. And unfortunately, this ended up being in that 15% where you ended up losing. Jason Tatum, off scoring the ball wise, didn't do anything for three quarters. Turn it on the fourth. Shout out to JT. Uh, there was going to be a ton of conversation. I mean, there's still a ton of conversations around his name right now, but those are kind of hushed now that they ended up winning that game. And he took over in that fourth quarter. But you get a bad game from him, a bad shoot tonight for the Boston Celtics, and you can't close it out. Again, you were you were in the hole for a lot of this game, so you made your own comeback. But once it ended up being 0-0, where it was a tie game with however many minutes left, this is a game you got to go grasp. And I, I fear for y'all's sake, talking to the Philly fans, that this was the one that got away that might cost you a finals appearance. That last seven minutes of the game six might have caused you a finals appearance. The first finals appearance in 20 plus years. I'm not writing off Jimmy Butler. I'm not even writing off the Knicks against Jimmy Butler just yet. But it feels like the winner of this series, this, this bottom half of the bracket, is going to be the team 
that wins the conference. So for you to be right there, a lot of momentum in your home court and not be able to close it out, I, I, I don't know what to say, man. And you know what? I was feeling good in the middle of that run. I'm like, okay, is Doc about to do it? Is he about to kill a curse? Is he about to not blow a series and make it to the conference finals? Well, here we are going into a game seven. And again, in the game seven, anything can happen. You got Joel Embiid, who's the MVP of the league this season. You got James Harden, who just had 240 pieces in this series. You got Tobias Harris, who they needed to show up today. And I'm not even mad at Tobias Harris as his series altogether. I think he's been fine. I think he had a lot of great hustle and defensive moments in game five that like makes it okay if he's struggling and things like that but tonight non-existent in 40 minutes maybe like he played a ton of minutes and was kind of non-existent all over the court which is not what you want from a dude that you're paying 30 million dollars to it's not what you want from a dude that I, I, it's kind of murky, but you can say that there is a decision to be made. Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris, and you went one way, and the other dude went the other. Not great, and 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 I won't I won't say most must win because they have another chance, but like in a game that was right there for the taking, you let it slip through your fingers, and it, it's it, if you do not win Game Seven, you're gonna look back on that game in Philly history. You know what I'm saying? Not just in the year, for the next two three years, but like in Philly history, you're gonna look past or look through that moment and be like. We had it, bro. Harden has been such a roller coaster this series. Where you got the 240 pieces. You got the two duds in between. You got the last game where he wasn't elite, elite, but he was good. And then you got another game where, like, there are stretches of this game where he looked great. Like, the third quarter, he was getting to the free throw line. He was drawing his fouls. He was hitting the shots. And then the fourth quarter came around. I, I don't know if the brother scored in the fourth quarter. And I'm sure he played 12 minutes or close to it. You know, and those are the moments where you need him. Like, he was crucial for that run that brought them back into the game. But when it was right there for the take, I mean, again, it's crazy. So, I mean, the, the C's, boy, I, I won't say lucked out because your superstar player started to play. I, I This is actually something I've never seen before from a guy of his uh, Jason Tatum's caliber. And, I, again, I know there's conversation around JT right now after the last after the finals last year going into the season and in this series about what who he is as a player. What We're not getting into that. I'm just looking at it exactly what it, what it is. This All-NBA player, Jason Tatum, I, I don't know if I've seen a guy that makes All-NBA based on his offense and based on his ability to score be stinky from the field in the first, was it the first quarter in back-to-back -back games he didn't get a field goal? You know what, I want to look into see when his first actual field goal ended up being. With eight minutes left in the third quarter, he went the first 20, 20, 20, 28 minutes of ball and did not get a basket. That's their, that's their star player, their all-NBA player. And somehow they still won this game. That make, it makes no sense to me, but it happened. And I, I don't know who I feel more confident in going into Game 7. Neither of these teams have been super impressive. And I guess that's why it's been a good series because it's back and forth, back and forth. But I don't. if you ask me who's winning Game 7, I'm going to say Boston just because they got home court advantage. But it's like 51% of me is feeling Boston and 49% of me is feeling Philly. Like it's nothing there, which again, hopefully it's not a dud Game 7. I don't know. Uh, shout out to the Denver Nuggets. We'll see what happens with the Phoenix Suns. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of conversation and stuff between as I'm recording this video and when it comes out. So we might come back to it later down the line.